welcome back to another video. Uh, today's video is about how to identify when it's time to move on from something, whether that be a relationship, a job, a situation, maybe you're moving uh, and you're sick of living where you're at. And then also just to explore some of the psychology behind what holds us back from moving on and holding on to what we need to let go of, even though we know it's in our damn well best interest to let go of whatever that thing, situation, relationship, job is that's holding us back. So the first thing is how do we identify when it's time to move on from something? So I think the simplest form of it really is this. Just ask yourself, am I happy? Am I happy? Am I happy with this relationship? Am I happy with this job? Am I happy with uh, my current fitness? Am I happy with whatever it is, right? Just fill in the blank. And it's really that simple. You have to ask yourself that very simple question. Now, the challenging part, I think, is for a lot of people, or at least in my experience through coaching individuals, is not just identifying it, but allow yourself to be honest and truthful with the situation. Because many times what I've realized, again, in my experience with myself and coaching other people is that we may know something is no longer serving us. We may know a situation or a relationship is damn well time to move on from or the job, but there are things that hold us back, such as fear of the unknown, lack of a plan, uh, feeling overwhelmed at the changes you may need to make in your life in order to move on from a current situation onto the next step. But what we do is instead of being honest with ourselves, we'll start to make these excuses and talk to ourselves in order to justify the situation, the relationship, whatever the case may be, uh, in order to stay comfortable and say, well, it's not that bad because blah, 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 blah. But here's the thing. If when you ask yourself that very simple question that we had you present yourself with, am I happy? Without, If you start going into all these excuses, well, and you can't just give a straight answer. In other words, if I said, are you happy with your relationship? And then instead of telling me yes or no, you say, oh man, you know what? Well, this guy's really great though. And he's got this and he does this. And oh my gosh, he checks all the boxes, but blah, blah, blah. If you immediately have to start justifying it and you can't give a straight answer, yes or no, then damn well, you know as well as I do, better than I do, that you're not being honest with yourself. And the very simple answer is, am I happy? You're probably answering no. And that means that you need to move on because if you feel the need to justify it right away, that means again, you're not being honest and real with yourself and you're just really delaying the happiness that you want and desire. And in reality, you're not serving the other person or situation, whoever's involved with whatever the case may be for you for moving on and growing and learning lessons from this current situation as well. So ask yourself first, again, to review, am I happy? If the answer is no, then just leave it. It's just a yes or no question. And if you have struggle or struggle with or have trouble answering just a very direct yes or no answer to a very simple yes or no question, and you feel the need to justify, well, then the answer is you are not happy. And then to identify and be honest with yourself that all you're doing is beginning to justify why you're not happy. Because again, uh, fear of the unknown or overwhelm it, what am I gonna do next? So let me tell me all the reasons why I am happy. No, just be honest with yourself, feel it in your heart feel it in your body, understand the truth and the nature of what it is that you truly deserve and want. So that being said, if it is something that you feel, first of all, the tool, again, just ask yourself, am I happy? And then second, the challenge that you may need to overcome if you have problem, a problem just saying yes or no to whatever question or situation you're presenting yourself and you're justifying, well, be honest with yourself. And after you're honest with yourself, then you can start kind of digesting, dissecting, looking at different perspectives, journaling, writing these things out. Why am I not happy? Because when you become honest with yourself and you've identified that it's a situation, a job, a relationship, again, et cetera, et cetera, that you need to move on from, and you're honest with yourself, only then when you're honest with yourself, can you start to explore the reasons why you're unhappy with the situation? Because if you're unhappy with a situation or relationship, yada, yada, whatever the case may be, again, then after you're honest with yourself, then you can start to explore the reasons why you're really unhappy. And when you look at the reasons and be honest with yourself about why you're truly unhappy with this situation, then you can possibly come up with a solution to remedy this particular um, you know, situation in your life. 
But if you're not honest, well, then you're just continuing to lie to yourself. And again, delaying your happiness and perpetuating the frustration, the resentment, whatever the negative emotions are arising that you're experiencing from holding on to whatever the situation is. So identify, am I happy? Be honest with yourself. Then start journaling about it. Write it. Explore the reasons why you are unhappy. And then if it's something that you're like, you know what, I'm just unhappy because it's just, uh, we'll take a relationship, for example. You know, I've tried so many times over and over. I'm the one putting in all the effort. It's never being reciprocated. Um, you know, we argue about the same things. We can't see eye to eye. I feel like I'm being held back and I'm on a different growth trajectory than my partner and I need to move on from him and her or him or her. Um, you know, and you've tried this over and over. And most importantly, when it comes to a relationship, if the same amount of effort and energy is not reciprocated and moving forward and progressing the relationship or coming to a resolution from whatever the problems are that are presenting themselves, well then if you've tried and tried and tried, uh, I mean, you get to make the decision. Do you want to continue to do the same thing uh, and be in the same relationship? Do you want to, maybe it's your approach. Maybe your approach is not getting you the response. But if you truly feel in your heart, like, you know what? I have to be honest with myself. I'm just on a different crow trajectory. Uh, my boyfriend just wants to stay at home and play video games and not do shit all day. I'm super busy and I'm focused on improving myself and growing my business, my you know relationships, my work, my money, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I don't want to just sit around all day on the couch and not do nothing. Well, then you can't change someone else. If they don't want to do it, you're on a different growth trajectory. It's probably a different you know, situation you need to move on from. Same thing with a job. If you ask yourself, am I happy? If you immediately answer no, then that's all you need to know. You don't need to go any deeper than that. You don't need to look at the reasons why. So after, again, you ask yourself, am I happy? And you're honest with yourself. You've explored possibilities uh, as far as solutions go to remedy the situation. If it is something that you want to try to improve or repair, um, or whatever that may be, and the answer is still no, it's time to move on. Well, great. Congratulations, you're about to be free as a motherfucker and feel great because now you're starting to tune into what you really want, which is the most powerful and valuable thing that any individual can do in their life. It also can be the most challenging thing. It can be the most challenging thing to move on to a new situation and it can be challenging to identify and be honest with ourselves that we're unhappy with the current situation because many of us in the past, at least for me, and again, through my experience coaching clients, have a fear of the unknown. So you have a fear of the unknown. Well, I'm unhappy with this situation, but fuck, I don't want to admit it because, well, what's next? I don't know. What is next? You can either approach it with fear of the unknown or excitement for the future. You get to choose whatever's next with you. How do you choose? Well, again, you just start with that same question. What will make me happy? What is it that makes me happy? Not anyone else, not anything or anyone who cares about anyone else is about you. What is it that makes you happy? You get to write about this. You get to meditate about this. What the question you get to ask yourself, journal, what's next? What makes me happy? It might come right away. It might not come for a week. It might not come for a couple months. For me, when I started to search for my life's purpose, what I want to do, uh, why am I not happy with my work? What direction do I want to go? That should take a couple of months. And it can be agonizing. And there's really nothing else you can do except for ground yourself and continue to release things in your life that are holding you back and create the space and time for that knowledge for your higher self to speak to you for that clarity and guidance on what you want to come through something that again can be frustrating you've just got to be patient with it but just continue to ask yourself and meditate create the space for that answer to come into your mind and your heart and you will know in your heart because it's something that will bring so much joy to your life and again journaling is a great tool because you can write about things that you've been happy with in the past or situations in your life that you were most happy. What I've realized is that I think people begin to be unhappy with their situations, whether it be, again, work, relationships, which are the two main areas, or their their body, their fitness, all that stuff, because we're not growing. We stop growing and begin to plateau, and there's nothing to look forward to, so there's a level of complacency. And if you're happy with the complacency and the comfort and not growing, that's cool. And if you got a partner that's like that, hey, shit, you guys are two pieces in the pod more power to you, live your life, be happy. That's all that matters. That's what this is about, is just what makes you happy. But if it's something that you're frustrated with and you need to move on, you're like, man, how do I do this? After you've identified it, you, uh, you know, you've 
learned to be honest with yourself and accurate with how you really feel. Uh, you verbalized uh, and intellectualized and expressed cathartically in a journal setting or talking to a friend, whatever the case may be, that this is what's going on. You've tried to remedy the solution if it is something you want to remedy. And you know what? You've come to the terms that this is actually is not what I want. I'm trying to fix something. I'm doing the old Albert Einstein, doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. This is insanity. And you decided to move on. Well, great. Now, again, the next step is you identify what it is you want. You write about it and ask yourself the questions. What makes me happy? When it comes to you, and it might take a couple months, might take longer, it might only take a day, who knows? Maybe you've known for a while, and this is the uh, video and message you needed to hear in order to give yourself permission to be honest with yourself. Well, here is the invitation uh, for you to be honest with yourself. Here's the permission you've been asking for. Here's the sign you've been waiting for. Be honest with yourself. It's time to move on from that shit you've known from a while. So what's next after you've identified these these things you need to move on from and you've come to terms with it and it's something you do want to move on from and not try to remedy. Good shit. We're ready to move on and go upward, upward and upward and upward. And it feels incredibly free because again, you're starting to, in your heart, identify what makes you happy. Well, great. It's really simple now. Now all of a sudden you've got the brain and heart coherence. You've listened to your heart about what's true and what's real for you. Now is when your mind comes into play. You write about what does it look like for me to be happy. And you might not know exactly, but if you start looking back in situations in your life, relationships in your life, identify common threads, write out little stories that you remember times when you were most happy in your life and say, okay, how do I rec recreate that now? And not those same exact situations because they will never be the same. How do, what or what was it about those situations, the job uh, or the pursuit of that goal or that person or whatever that I really liked? What was it about that? It's about qualities. It's about themes. It's about these lines of similarities. Uh, the, this is little bits of the universe that uh, universal knowledge and your higher self dropping knowledge and guidance on you to point you in the right direction to what you really want to do. So what would make me happy? What would make me do this? How do I know? And then again, the mind and heart coherence, you've been listening to your heart. You're honest with yourself that that was no longer making you happy. You identify what does get, is going to make you happy. What does make you happy? That starts to feel good in your heart. Now the heart is lit up. So now, okay, great. You're using your mind, mind, brain, heart coherence. You say, okay, great. This is what I want to do for a living. Okay, well, I can't just up and quit my job right now. This is when the mind comes to the plate. Now you start planning. Well, what would be a first step or what would be a realistic expectation to make this happen? So it's all easy for me to talk about these things, but it's easier a lot of the time if you hear it from experience as well. So here's why I made this video today and how it relates to my life uh, through my own story. So last July, here we are, it's July 2022, July 2021, last year I moved back down to San Diego. And uh, first of all, I listened to my heart. My sister asked me to move out to San Antonio. She's like, you should come out here, you know, visit, it's great, I can get you a job right away. You know, you'd be close to me. Um, I can help you take care of Manny, my dog and all this stuff. And I was like, cool, so I went out there and shit just fell through. Um, I was gonna stay with her and was gonna have a couple of weeks to check San Antonio out, see if I liked it. And uh, her dog like wanted to eat me and my dog alive. <laughs> so I couldn't stay with her. So her and her ex-boyfriend and you know, th shout out to you Ray, thank you for helping me out at that time. They put me up in this like hotel, this like extended stay hotel, but that shit was still expensive and I wasn't working at the time and uh, I wasn't gonna lean on her for financial support for an overly extended amount of time. I was like, ah, I got this. So basically my, my plans fell through and my choice was I either get a job right away, sign a lease for an apartment, get working, staying out here, even though I don't know I'm gonna stay here, or I go and I take some more time to figure this out. So I really had to search in my heart pretty quickly, you know, what is it what I, I wanna do? And I talked to my buddy, one of my good buddies, Dab, and one of my brothers, shout out to you, Dab, and if you're watching this, and I was talking to him and he put it to me this way. He said, look, man, if your goal is to live out in San Antonio in order to save money so you can move back to California, but right now you actually have enough savings to move to California, well, who cares if you get a job out here and you're only able to pay your bill, just pay your bills and save maybe 100 or 200 extra bucks a month. He's like, you're already achieving the goal that you want to achieve. You're living in the place you want to live and you're still coming out on top and you can take it from there. It's like, shit, that's a good, that's a good way to put it, buddy. So 
uh, I made the decision, told my sister, and I knew it was right in my heart. I could just, and you will feel this. This is a sign. It's a, it's a whole body experience. You will know in your heart and you will know in your mind, but you will feel it in your body that Fuck, that's where I want to be. This is what I want to do. I didn't want to stay in San Antonio, man. That, that city was not for me. It's cool. My sister loves it. I couldn't even take my dog for a walk, man. I thought he's going to have heat stroke, you know, just going outside for like five, 10 minutes. So I was like, well, shit, I can't be here. I can't even walk my dog, man. I can't even be outside. And I'm a beach boy. I'm a California boy my whole life. I'm like, shoot, I want to be out with my shirt off, walking around in the park, go sit in the grass, maybe go for a hike in the mountains, go lie on the beach. I'm like, I got to move back. And when I chose between relocating back to South Bay, LA, Hermosa Beach area or San Diego, I always told myself when I left San Diego the first time that I knew I'd be back. And thinking about it, I was like, shoot, this is time, man. So in my heart, I knew I was going to go back to San Diego. I was broke. I didn't have a job. I reached out to some friends in Ventura, where I'm from, and god damn, man, John, Eva, shout out to you guys and your family, and then one of my good buddies, who's always been a lifelong brother, Randy, they let me crash at their pad, and literally for three weeks, I was commuting back and forth, or like a month, I was staying, uh, couch surfing, staying in their guest bedrooms, literally commuting back two or three times a week from San Diego to Ventura, renting Airbnbs, searching for apartments, searching for jobs, but I knew that I, what I wanted to do, so I listened to my heart about what I really wanted, and then I used my head to say, okay, what strategies, what options do I have? Well, let me go stay in Ventura and let me commute back and forth in order to find. So I, I was putting together a game plan with my head, but I was listening to my heart about what I really wanted. So this is what you get to do too. If it's a situation or something you want to improve in your life and you're honest with yourself about what you want, this shit was not easy and I knew it wasn't. And I prepared myself mentally that, bro, you're going to be sleeping on a couch. You're going to be freaking, you know, living off a of very low income right now. And you're going to be grinding back and forth focused while you're trying to find a place to live and work and what you want to do. So I did found a place. Luckily, call it Kismet. This is also the other thing. The universe will help you and it will send you signs. There was like two restaurants in San Diego. I was like, if I'm going to wait tables again, I'm going to do it at one of these two places. I put my resume on Indeed. The one, my number one choice restaurant, they just happened to be opening back up seven days a week. So they were going through this big hiring blitz. It's one of the nicest restaurants in San Diego. Uh, and they called me in for an interview and I got a job. So talk about Kismet. I didn't talk to these people yet. But the one restaurant that I had picked out in my mind and researched as a part of my planning and listening to my heart and the direction I wanted to go contacted me. Signed from the universe, bro, you're on the right track. So I got a job at this place and super grateful, ton, made tons of money there. Making, you know, you make a lot of servers there make six figures a year as a waiter. Freaking amazing. So incredible job, super cool people. Everyone's awesome. Uh, I did like the work environment, uh, but it was a hustle. It was a grind, which waiting tables is, but especially at this place because it's a high end place. So I, I worked there for about six, I was working there for like five, six months from about month five. I was like, you know what? Shit, man, I'm grateful. I've saved some money. I've got built a nice little apartment and home for me and Manny. Uh, I've got some money in my pocket, got a good tax return coming. I was like, I know that I'm not happy and I don't want to be here for that long. It's time for me to move on. So I went deep into the soul searching thing. I was like, well, what do I want to do next? Thankfully, I had been through this before. The first time I moved up to LA from San Diego, I was just getting out of college and I did the whole soul searching thing, decided to pursue the career in fitness, which was the first, was the reason that I moved back up to LA to start my career in fitness. And so thankfully, since I had been through this before, I knew it right in my heart right away. I said, yo, you gotta get back into fitness, man. You are a trainer, you are a coach. It's what you love to do. This is what you're passionate about. You've done this before, go and make it happen. So wild, man, uh, when I decided to make the move and I put in my two weeks in March, I didn't have a gym to work at. I didn't have any clients. Um, I didn't have a job. I didn't have anything. I just had a little money saved, but I knew that I could do this. So I planned, I planned that this is what I wanted to do. But rewinding real quick, why I decided to move on from the restaurant, most people would be like, why didn't you just go part time? Why wouldn't you go part time and just keep that security net? I won't get into the details, man, but I knew in my heart that it was time to move on from that place. The energy in there was was getting so weird. I was getting these weird underlying toxic vibes from certain people. And I was like, yo, it just means I'm outgrowing this shit. I got to go. So I listened to my heart. I put a plan into action, interviewed a bunch of different gyms, found the one I wanted to train out, visualized and knew the situation I wanted to be in. And I created it. So then if you watch any of my fitness stuff on Instagram uh, or even in my posts, probably in the past up here, uh, I found a great gym that I wanted to train at. I couldn't work for somebody else. After running my own fitness business for five years, I really couldn't go back to work for um, a big box gym of any kind. 
because I knew that shit was just not the right fit. So decided to move on uh, from working for somebody else and went into business for myself um, and just planned it all out, man. And I planned out working at this gym. I started getting clients. I started attracting clients. I reached out and was starting a network, met my current business mentor, Zach Colburn. Shout out to you, Zach, and PTBI. I love all you guys. Um, and it's changed my life forever. So now, um, again, the crazy thing is, this is the other thing I'll share. I started to train in this gym and I started to do in-person training. But as I met Zach and I started the course, PTBI, and now I do online fitness coaching only, I only train online, um, I knew that this was the right move for me because I could feel it in my heart and my body. And within the first month of me training people in person again at this new spot, and this the gym is sexy as hell. All the trainers are super cool. It's a great situation to be in. But in my heart, I knew that I had already played this game. I had already beat this level in the video game. I've already run my own fitness business, trading time for money, trading one-on-one. -on -one. So I, I knew in my heart that I needed to outgrow this, or I was already like outgrowing this shit very quickly, and I felt it very quickly. And I could feel that the other trainers and shit in there knew it too. Like I know my stuff, I know what I'm doing, at least to a, a good enough level to where I can get results and really be effective with people in a coaching manner. Um, and I say that just out of humility because I know there's, I know that I'm, I'm very confident in what I do, but I'm also very humble now and know that there's people out there way fucking better, right? There's always people better and worse than us and wherever we're doing it, whatever stage. So remember that too, to not compare yourself because there's always people out there that are gonna be better and worse than where you're at, regardless of how successful or how high up the ladder you've been. There's always levels above, there's always levels below. So do not judge yourself. Little side nugget there. But identify in your heart when it feels right or when it feels wrong from the current situation. It felt wrong to be training in person. So I transitioned completely online because as I build my online fitness coaching, I also have the intention of public speaking and building my YouTube channel, writing another book, all these things, because I know that this is part of my vision and really who I am as well. It's uh, all intertwined. And even then, my vision isn't entirely clear how the fitness and the speaking and the coaching and the writing work together. They do. They're very synergistic. But the And I know the ultimate goal and picture, but I don't know exactly how it's all going to play out yet. But that's part of manifestation. That's part of the fun, man. I'll see what the universe presents it because it knows what I want. And I'm very clear on how I want to feel and how I want my lifestyle to be. So I'll just let God and the universe take care of the rest and listen to my heart and my guides and my guidance on how to go about it. So I share that story because hopefully by listening to my story, you understand how I was able to identify what situations were no longer right for me and then put together a plan in my mind. So listening to my heart about what I want and using my head, my mind and heart, brain and heart coherence to work together, to put together a logical plan to in order to follow my heart and realize my dreams. Now I'm well on my way. So this video comes out of you wanting to help you move on from situations that no longer serve you. Because the reality is the more you deny what it is you really want, and the more you, you know, make excuses and tell me all these reasons and shit and try to justify a situation that no longer serves you, you are just perpetuating your high levels of stress, resentment, sadness, anger, grief, whatever negative emotions come up that you no longer want. The reality is you can have whatever the hell you want to have. You can do whatever the hell you want to do. You can be whoever you want to be. But you've got to overcome the limitations that you don't think it's possible because, oh shit, it's too late. Oh, I can't do it because uh, I got blah, 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 kids now and a full-time job. No, this is bullshit. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm giving you the roadmap. Identify in your heart what you don't want. Once you've been honest with yourself that it's what you don't want, instead of saying, I can't because blah, 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 all you're doing is putting up roadblocks in front of yourself. Stop. Don't put roadblocks in yourself. Say, this is what I want. The next question is to say, what's the next logical step or how will I make this work? Because look, what if your situation is super tough to get out of your current circumstances and it takes you four or five years to get out of your situation, but into the situation you want and have your life be the way that you want it to be. Who gives a shit if you're 40 right now? Who gives a shit if you're 50 and you're starting right now? What if you started at 50 and at 55, you have the exact life that you want and it took five years to build? What if it takes five years to build, but from 55 to 85, 95, 100, however long you want to live, the rest of your life is set up 
on a trajectory and in a way that you want it. And more importantly, you'll have the tools to identify when it's not in alignment, and then you'll have the skills and the experience of what it's like to move on to another path. What if you're 30, 35, 40, whatever the case may be, age does not fucking matter. Doesn't matter if you have kids, doesn't matter if you have sickness, whatever. What matters is that you identify what you don't want and you identify what you do want. And as long as you stick to what you do want, and instead of telling yourself why you can't, you start identifying ways and, and opening up your mind to explore the possibilities in what ways you can start moving towards that, that's all that matters. You just take steps, little by little by little. It's about forming a vision that you are emotionally connected with in your heart. And as long as you continue to do that and identify any limitations or roadblocks you're setting yourself up to, I'm too busy, I already have kids, I already have a career, blah, 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 I can't do this, I got a mortgage, blah, blah. No, bullshit. And instead of taking that mindset, you say, well, how can I? How can I create this in my life? What would be the next step to make this work in my life with my current circumstances, with being married with kids and a career already? How would I start working this into my life? If you immediately go, I can't, I can't, Tara, well then you're fucked because you're telling yourself. So whatever you tell yourself is what you're going to believe. So be aware of what your automatic response and thoughts are because that's the old you, that's your ego trying to pull you down and hold you in a certain, uh, basically circumstances that are making you uncomfortable in the first place. So you have, this is where transcending your limitations and having an open mind to what's possible for yourself and belief and confidence in who you are that you can achieve it comes in. It takes time, it takes practice, ask for help. There's tons of books out there. There's tons of coaches out there. I'm happy to help you. If you ever want to talk about anything, send me an email, let me know, shoot, let's set up a phone conversation. Uh, let's chat because I, promise you if you talk to somebody who has done it or moved out of it they will be able to open up a space and help you identify your limiting beliefs what's holding you back and come up with a clear vision for what you want but i've given you the tools here but if you want extra help do not be afraid to reach out because god knows that i really started taking off when i started opening myself up to help ideas from others having them listen having them hear me out very very important stuff so i hope this was beneficial for you today. I want nothing but the best for you and to know that whatever you want in life, you can have it, you can do it, you can be it. You just have to be patient and first honest with yourself about what you really want. And it might start with what you really don't want first, which may be your current situation, your job, your relationship, etc, etc. Identify it if you're happy or not. If you're not, start to think and open your mind what would it look like? What does happiness look like? What would I rather be doing? Who would I rather be with? What would I rather my life be like? And instead of starting to tell yourself all the reasons why you can't have that, start to think about and ask yourself the question, well, what would I need to do? What would it look like if my life was like this? What would be the first steps? What would be the first things that I would need to overcome? Well, I would need to figure out, you know, my money situation because I want to do this job. Okay, so how much money do you need to save? Cool, I'd need to save that. Well, I can't, I don't have any extra money. Well, how can you create extra money? See what I'm saying? So for every problem, there's a solution. But if you're someone who always gives another problem when a solution is presented, you're obviously never gonna solve the problem. You're just continuing to fight for your limitations. So think about what's possible for you. Think about what you want. Begin to connect with the vision. Be honest with yourself and do not be afraid to ask for help. This is not something that is easy to do. It is challenging. There's a lot of steps to it. Uh, it does take time, it takes patience. Most importantly, it takes an awareness and honesty within yourself that you have to develop first. And if you haven't, then fuck, you're just gonna sit here and fight for your limitations all the time. But I know that you can do it because I'm just a regular dude and I've done it and I'm doing it right now and it never stops, my friends. So hopefully this was helpful. I want you to be happy. I want you to be peaceful. I want you to be healthy. I want you to be uh, wealthy. I want you to have whatever you wanna have. I want you to be doing whatever you wanna be doing. I want you to be the person that you know that you're able to be. This is how we do it, being honest with ourselves and identifying what's in our way, developing a vision, and then starting to take little baby steps towards it. Little baby steps. Any big steps, man. Just take little baby steps. Appreciate you watching. Please like the video if you liked it. 
please share it with others. If it resonated with you and you have someone come to mind, then it may help as well. And please subscribe to my channel uh, if you enjoy some of the content that I'm sharing. It also helps me uh, with the YouTube algorithm and expand and grow my channel and help me share my messages in love and trust and faith and trying to help other people with as many other people as possible. So again, thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Uh, reach out if you have any questions. Sending nothing but the best energy to you and yours. And I'll see you next time. Peace.